Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Who never stops working. Roxy. <laughs> yes. I got bills to pay. Hey, girl. What's up, Roxy? Hi, hi. How you feeling? It's good to see you all. Good to be here. Good, good to be here fun. just hanging. Absolutely. Yeah. And congratulations, Thank Mama. You. This is Thank you. super, super, super dope. Thank you. It's so unfortunate much. you got to do it with these two. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. If yeah. there's ever anything you need as far as help and getting them in line, I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been years, years, and I still can't. Yeah, no, I can't yeah. help you. Can't. Now, Roxy, you, you in a new movie, Dutch 2. I am, You yes. play a lesbian gangster. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell the lesbian got to do with anything? She's a lesbian. I, right? yeah. <laughs> She's a lesbian gangster. <laughs> you know, wait. I thought Jess was going to call out the lesbian <laughs> part, but of course you wait. would. He couldn't you wait. You couldn't <laughs> wait. You could not wait to put it out there. Gosh, yes, I do. So uh, how was he playing that role? Because you're, you're not a lesbian. I'm not a lesbian, yeah. but shout out to the whole LGBT. TQ, you know, plus community um, and all my friends that are. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it it was really, really different. I mean, of course, because, um, you know, but at the same time, we all know what it is to be in love and we all know what it is to want love and need love. So regardless of who it is on the opposite side, it's it's easy to tap into that that feeling of wanting to be loved. Oh, that's a great perspective because it's, mm -hmm. it's not like you got to do anything physical. You just got to tap into the emotion. Well, she got romantic. Oh, no. I she got, got, I, she got, got a little romantic. romantic. She, she got, got out of jail. She, got, she, got, she went in a little right. She came home. Huh? <laughs> well, as right soon as you door, get out yeah. of jail, not that I've ever just got out of jail before in my career or my life, but I would assume the first thing you're going to want to do is, you know, yeah. feel loved. Absolutely. And that's what Angel wanted. Angel wanted to feel loved as soon as expeditiously in the words of T.I. Uh, mm -hmm. She wanted to feel some love and she, she linked up with her girlfriend Goldilocks. Uh, oh, played by Dakia, uh, Dakia Anderson. She's an amazing girl too. Yeah. So yeah, it was so super fun. The first Dutch movie came out 2021. Yeah. Um, do we have to watch the first, would you have to watch the first one to understand the second one? You don't. But if you're a fan of uh, Terry Woods' books and what she created with the Dutch trilogy, which is what I really feel the fan base and the audience that loves from this series, um, you're going to be surprised. But you do not have to watch the first one to understand. But I would say watch it because Lance mm -hmm. Gross, Lance Gross is, you know, a friend and mm -hmm. he's amazing yeah. and what they do. And uh, but this is Angel's story and she's getting revenge for for Dutch, you know, and it's what she goes through and, and her journey. And it's it's dope because it's a female led cast. Mm -hmm. Um I'm at the reins. This is my first time ever starring in a role, being up there number two on the call sheet because Dutch is number one on the call sheet. So, mm -hmm. but it was a really, really, really dope experience. Um, and shout out to Manny, who we all know, Manny Haley, for shout the man, Manny, you know, for creating these experiences to put us on the screen. So it was really dope. How does your hosting uh, background help you with the the acting? The hurry up and wait, man. <laughs> the hurry up and wait. The hurry up and wait. The uh, the patience, um, and you know, the professionalism of how to act on the set. Mm -hmm. You know, you just already know what those moving parts are. But as far as acting goes, it doesn't. It's it's yin and yang. It's you know, acting is really raw emotion and where you pull in these things in from from experiences. Like Angel is a very dark she has a very dark history and past from being you know sexually molested from her father at a very mm. very young age and um always being betrayed and um taken advantage of by men and mm. so she has this hatred for men uh that it's like okay roxy where do you some some things of my past i don't want to revisit but i had to revisit for mm. this role and then there was some things that's like, where do you tap in to get this energy and this anger? And then you find things, you know, as life, but we already up there. So there's so many experiences that we've had that you could find like a substitution or something to help you get into the role and the character. Yeah. Is it completely yeah. identical to the book or is it things that were left out or? Um, like you... I think it's a good representation of the mm -hmm. book. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's, it, I think it runs parallel to, to what the book, the book is and, um, what the what the story what the story tells gotcha. yeah how how would you describe how respect influences Angel's actions throughout the film because it seems like she's seeking respect that's all she wants mm -hmm. that's all she wants she 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 not only uh, she thrives off of respects but I think she also gets a high off it it's almost like an addiction it's not even mm -hmm. like it's like if you cross if you cross Angel mm -hmm. anything by any means necessary it's like 
you out. It's almost like the Godfather. It's like, yeah, well, he's got to go. Mm-hmm. You know, like just she's ruthless. She is completely, completely ruthless. Uh, and what I what I enjoyed doing was playing something that is completely opposite of <laughs> who I am. Of who you are. Yeah, of who I am. It's like, I mean, you know me. I don't think mm-hmm. I don't think you guys could ever picture me like just. Blasting off a yeah, gun and like ruthless. Shoot, I wouldn't say ruthless. That's shooting a, up yeah. a shooting up a corner no. like it's not no. Roxy, you know. <laughs> uh, Did you have to learn how to shoot? I mean, I already knew how to shoot. That okay, thing, you okay, know? Roxy. Register gun on it, so I was like, hey. I to yeah. wish him would at mm-hmm. my house. So yeah, don't play with it. <laughs> you got to do that as a single woman. You got to do that. So yeah, no, I knew how to. That was actually the funnest part on the set because. Uh, that was the part that shocked some of the prop guys. They were like, "Okay, put your hand like this. You gotta hold check it the gun, here, make sure, make sure this is something like, yeah, this. okay, pop, pop, pop." <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun. It was a lot of fun. What about respect? As far as like in your real life, have you ever felt like you had to demand respect in this business? I think all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think all the time. I think I still fight for it even today. Even being, you know, on a platform like Good Morning, Morning America, America and um, and GMA Three. Shout out to my family over there. But you know, we still, we still as a culture still fight for respect in those big rooms and in those big mm-hmm. meetings because people don't think to take us seriously when we are a driving force in this economy and we are a driving force to a lot of decisions that are made politically. You know, it, it's just, it's amazing how we still don't get the level of respect in those boardrooms, just like how Jay-Z says, you keep on fighting and you keep on showing up until they call you CEO, until they call you the mm-hmm. boss, until you, you know, and then they call upon you for uh, decision-making things, you know, until they're scared of you when it's an election season and they're calling you a threat, you know, mm-hmm. it's like those kind of things <laughs> that it's like you have to demand respect. So yeah, me personally, Roxy, I mean, in my journalistic career, in my hosting career, I'm, I'm always fighting to be like, what? I'm like, Tyrese, what more do you want for me? Like, <laughs> what more do you want me to do? Wow. Like, honestly, there's like, there's nothing else that I have, I should have to do. But, you know, you always have to still tap dance. I feel so, like y'all, I feel like you won just because you're still here. Like, relevant. Like, like, I got yeah. bills to pay. I got bills to pay. You know what I'm saying? You're I got bills America, to you pay. You're still here. Yeah. 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 And how do you, how are you doing all that? Of course, you're doing the hosting stuff you're doing the acting and then you're back in school yeah you went back to your HBCU wow. yeah Bowie State University what made you do that um well first of all you guys we always used to tour the HBCU route and it was always the most fun going to HBCU campuses me specifically going to Bowie State they have an amazing communications department um I connected with them I vibed with them it was always a goal for me to go back and be a college graduate for my family, for my lineage. Most people don't know when in the middle of school you got a, a job offer in Boston and you said, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. That. And it was actually Russ Parr, shout out to Russ Parr, that told me that, you know, you could, you, you gonna starve. You're going to you're gonna have pizza and ramen noodles every single day. He's like, but you can't always start in a top 10 market, Roxy. You can always go back to school. And so that launched my radio career, which which is where you and I knew each other for so, so many years. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it wasn't for radio, and I think people don't, people n- have a, more of a respect for radio now, especially because of the culture shift and what you guys have created, what the Elvis Durans has created, mm-hmm. what like, you know, the legends have, even Russ Parr and the Steve Harvey's, everybody, first. Russ Parr at the end of the day, you gotta give the man the respect. Mm-hmm. Um, what they've created is that people forget that radio is really the basic foundation of what television and live television is. Mm -hmm. If you can be in a box and pretend to talk to a bunch of people that you can't see Mm -hmm. and be that creative, then you can do that on camera if your face is friendly for camera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but that changed, though. That has Everybody changed, Everybody, there was a lot of radio faces back in the day. Mm-hmm. A lot of big back personalities. Oh, my <laughs> God. God. The, the game has changed a lot. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, but remember that used to be a thing. They'd be like, oh, you got a face, face for radio. radio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and so, uh, but I always, you know, I always credit my radio career to, to everything. It wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have got 106 in Park if I didn't. Mm-hmm. You know, Stephen Hill was 
fan of radio personalities, came from radio, came mm-hmm. from that station in Boston. So free came from radio. Yeah. You know, it's just like a lot of people come from radio and they, they just transition and, and go on the television. And salute to Russ Paul. We don't, Russ Paul don't get the credit he, he really deserves. doesn't. You know how many mm-hmm. people Russ Paul put in movies early? R- Russ Paul was doing it before Tyler Perry yes. was doing it and doing mm-hmm. those movies and like, you know, before anybody was just trying. You're right. Kevin Shout Hart. Out. Yeah. He put you in a movie? Yes, he did. Tyler Lepley. What was your what was your part in that movie? Uh, I played. I, I I did two like did like two Russ Paul movies. I forgot now though what I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was so long ago. Yeah, it was, but I did two yeah. of them though. Mm-hmm. But no, he don't get the credit he deserves yeah, for putting Paul. a lot of black people in yeah. movies early and people that nobody was even expecting to be these stars that they are mm-hmm. now. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Because I did. Me and Tyler did a movie together called Ringside. I might have been his lackey. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah, he was a boxer. <laughs> I might have been the like his guy that rubbed his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> From the jump. I don't remember. That's why he was in the movie. That's why you played the movie. I don't remember. Like he was so how did you get into this. character? <laughs> mm. what, what was your substitution and what was your motivation to get remember. into that role, remember. Charlamagne? <laughs> I think I was sitting on his lap. Rubbing shoulders. Nah. I'm not saying I did. You had to earn him up. That's what it felt like. It felt like something you would do. <laughs> like something you would do. <laughs> I can't stand y'all. Did, uh, yeah. did the movie Dutch 2, did it shift your perspective on womanhood? Uh, in what way? You because, can... you know, it, the like I saw you say that, uh, well, no, I wonder what your initial perception of your own strength was prior to embodying the role of Angel. I think Angel em- empowered me a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Angel made me stronger because, again, like she commands. I'm not... You, like it, and I'm sorry to face this way because I've known yeah. them for so many yeah, years. No, but like y'all know me, I don't walk into a room loud. Mm-hmm. I'm very mm-hmm. respectful. I'm very quiet. You know, she walks into a room loud. She walks into a room commanding respect. But it's not like that commanding respect. It's I walk into a room. And yeah, I want respect, but I'm also very. I feel like approachable. She walks in like Jay Prince. Mm. Or, <laughs> See, that's what I mean. Did you she know, shift your perspective on? Yeah, how or Jimmy sure. Henchman, yeah. or word, like word, like, word, like word. these okay. people that like mm-hmm. I know, and it's like that's like by any means necessary. People that just you don't you you only hear about their reputation, yeah. but you don't really you know why they have this reputation yeah. or why they're they got this street cred of respect. Mm. Uh, oh, that's so, what you dove into in the movie. And so, yeah, like I dove into my New Orleans roots. I dove into like knowing what it was to grow up in the box and, you know, every ward was different. Um, I tapped into my days in Chicago and knowing whether you had to wear the hat to the left or to the right or who mm. you who, who you was dealing with. Like, you know, uh, my life has around parallel to this lifestyle but mm-hmm. just you know blessing that I wasn't in, caught up in the middle of it but I'm not going to act naive like I don't know what's going on in the streets and mm-hmm. that helped me with the character of Angel but Angel is like I'm I'm scared of her mm-hmm. I'm really scared of her like she's I wouldn't she's like a Griselda Blanco type she's mm-hmm. she's she's got a very 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 uh, short temper. So in the movie, you don't give respect that easily, right? I remember when uh, I think Roly Poly, whenever he came, he bought y'all some drinks. Like you didn't show respect. Are you like that in in your real life, where it's like you have to earn it before I give it to you? Because that's how she was in the movie. I respect everybody. It's kind of like in class. I always thought like you start off with an A and then you start losing that A throughout the semester. Mm-hmm. I'm going to always do onto others as I would have done onto myself. I'm always going to treat everybody with the utmost respect whenever I come up. But then when you start trying to play me, mm-hmm. that's when then I'm like, nah, don't, I'm not a pushover. Like you're not going right. to, you're not going to just take advantage of me because I'm like, why would you want to even take a, I'm a sweet person. Why do you want to take advantage mm-hmm. of me? Why would you want to treat me bad? So if, if somebody were to, you know, start disrespecting me, then I'm, you know, I'm going to stand up for myself. Mm. But Angel, she'll just shoot you. Period. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> she ain't got time. She just, <laughs> and she's not throwing hands. She's shooting. She, mm-hmm. yeah. She's got no times for explanations. So, and that's, that's who she is. She's just, yeah, she cray. There's a scene in the movie where Angel says to her girlfriend that she don't need love and that she values loyalty more. Yeah. How does Roxy feel about that? What do you feel about the importance of loyalty over love? Ah. <sighs> I think I think with loyalty comes love. Mm-hmm. I think that loyalty makes you love somebody because you wouldn't want to betray that person. 
So I value loyalty more than love because anybody could say they love you. That's right. Yeah. Anybody can throw those words around. Anybody could even do the actions nowadays and play like they love you, but secretly Damn. be doing some stuff in the background, you know, mm -hmm. that you find out about. And then there goes the loyalty and the trust. So for me, loyalty and trust is above love. Because with loyalty and trust comes the love and it comes unconditionally. And I'm I'm a Scorpio and I'm a Latin woman, so I love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. But once you kind of betray that love and that trust, it's like how you go back to that? Like it's never, ever, ever gonna be the same. You know, it's 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 a challenge. What you think, Jess? Loyalty over love, love over loyalty? Mm, loyalty over love. Mm -hmm. I, I I respect loyalty way more than love. Like she said, you can love you can say you love anybody mm -hmm. you know what i mean but your actions don't amount up to it then because it, they, they go hand in hand yeah. but it has to be a bar like set of loyalty for you to even really mean that you love me mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying so. and y'all been married for a long time you could love your wife one day and not like her the next day say, but you're still are not married i was like yeah. that's just a rumor like, those, like that's just a rumor it's not true. glad you said that's false news. news i said uh, yeah you, you know little, what little oh that's my right. you, you guys have been uh work uh Gus Bins for a very long time. <laughs> right. And so, you know, you could love somebody one day and then you don't like them the next day, but you're loyal to that person, Word. you know, mm -hmm. and you're honest and respectful to that That's person, right. even mm -hmm. on the days that you can't stand that person. That's right. mm -hmm. To me, that goes more so, like Michelle Obama said, every day ain't going to be 50 50. Some mm -hmm. days it's going to be 80 20. Some yeah. days it's going to be 10 90. Some days you won't have nothing to give. Damn. But if you respect that person and you're loyal to that person, you won't sidestep on that person and do stupid stuff. I agree. Loyalty, trust, <clears throat> respect, honesty, to me, that's the equation for love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't say I love you if I'm not any of those things to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, I yeah. agree. All right. Going back to 106 and Park, because you briefly, <laughs> you briefly uh, talked about it. Do you see a docuseries in, in the making for that? Yeah, I don't know why BET hasn't done it yet. It's, oh, they've, no we've done, up. we've done, um, we've done the reunions, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, you know, I talked to Free uh, a lot yeah, and I talked to Terrence all the time, you know, uh, Jaleesa and I always keep it to, like we all, we all still, uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. I think there's a lot of stuff that has gone down and I think that there's a lot of things that also as adults that we look back and mm -hmm. we're like, what the hell? Yeah. What, what were we doing? But I'll say this though. What was the um, craziest thing you said you look back? What was one of the craziest things that you look back as no, an adult it's and just, like, what? It's, it's like, um, you know, 106 Park was the best job in the, in my entire career. Mm -hmm. That's it was, what I grew up it was, on. That was the best show. I, 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 we was watching that in middle school. Yeah, it was a party. It was yeah. a party every single day. Um, why was it the best job? You know why? Because, and, and we don't we don't give BET enough credit for this. We BET at least, in my experience, in my in Roxy Diaz's experiences, mm -hmm. treated their talent respectively as the stars that they were mm -hmm. or are. Mm -hmm. They treat the culture as the stars that they are. Mm -hmm. You gonna get the right dressing room when you go. Mm -hmm. You are gonna get the green room, mm -hmm. the big big green room. You know, yeah. um, we don't give BT enough credit for that because it wasn't until I left BT that I was like, oh, oh, I'm nobody in this business. Oh, they it don't matter what I did on this show for seven and a half years. Mm -hmm. I'm new in white Hollywood. I'm new in LA. Mm -hmm. And you have to fight for your respect and earn mm -hmm. your respect and you learn what it is to be a minority mm -hmm. in this big game of Hollywood. It's changed now and it's evolved. Like 106 Park was shit so long ago now. Yeah. You know, we almost talking 20 years now. Like, yeah. you know, so it, it, it's, it would be interesting to see the perspective of we've all grown and we've all done different things with our career and our lives. and the appreciation that should probably go back to want to BET yeah. and to what that show was and how important it was for the culture. Mm -hmm. Everybody always says, is there going to be another 106 in Park? Is, nah. And all that. They won't be. No, Who's watching videos? Exactly. Who's doing that? But I do believe there was a format there to do like a grown night show, talk show yeah, that I, BET kind of needed. Yeah. But, but y'all weren't competing with everything that 
you got to compete with now. Like there wasn't social media wasn't what it was now. Like TV right. mattered. <laughs> like, yeah, you sat down at six o'clock to watch one of those things talk, to watch videos, to watch the interviews. That's where you got that kind of content. And y'all yeah. used to make me mad because y'all ain't like playing the whole video. But <laughs> it was, but but the, the guest was dope. It was yeah. like a party. Like I'm mm-hmm. telling you, yeah. we used to like go home and watch it. We, our, I was in middle school. Our right, yeah, I'm young. But I was in middle school, and they used to cut it on in the um, cafeteria for us. We used to watch it during lunch. That's like, so much about Baltimore. Yeah, they, yeah, school yes. School. In the Baltimore <laughs> I remember having lunch school. at 6 o'clock. No, oh, the, the, the repeat? Yes, they oh, used to like, play it. <laughs> yeah, our principal, lunch at 6 o'clock in Baltimore? Girl, listen, <laughs> our principal loved it. They they recorded it for us, and they would play from the day before. Wow. Like, no, nah, we used to watch that every day That's in crazy. School. One of the things part of Baltimore public school <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> That was crazy. in the cafeteria. What you talking about? That's lunch, and oh, that was, was and lunch. it was music, music education, music. Uh, oh, that's true. That makes sense. It music. wasn't math. It wasn't the countdown. <laughs> it, wasn't it wasn't learning how to count to ten. You know, on, on the on the. Okay, yeah. When you talk about uh, like things that y'all probably look back on now, there was a time where you went viral before going viral was a thing. Um, you had walked off the set. Is this the part of the mess? Season. Is this the mess part? No, of the this dress? is not. This is okay. just Justin <laughs> Robin Moore. I was like, is this the little um, Let me brace no, myself. No, because no. I'm scared of these two. That's the one you got. Nah, no, nah, 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 I just, I just nah. wanted to know this because I remember this. Um, you walked off the set. Um, during a live taping and what what happened? Was it like anything with you? Terrence and, and I have said so many times that was fake. It was planned. Well, I wanted to know for me. Because it well, okay, it was ma'am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jess, I'm t- sorry to burst your s- bubble junior high in Baltimore lunch yes. and you were you, a, <laughs> a, a, a single tear came down yes. as I walked out the set. Terrence and I were on that show, nobody realizes, for f- three or four years straight with no vacation. Mm-hmm. And we we never took a day off. And so it was it came to <laughs> it came to that time. It was like, oh, okay, can we take a can we take a week? Can we yeah. go live our life? You know, like, and uh, the master man, uh, mastermind at hand who came up with that idea was like, well, y'all can't, one just can't be gone on vacation. And then the other one was, we got to create a scandal. Gotcha. That's all it was. It was literally, literally some of the best acting that we've ever done. Hey, y'all was preparing for y'all acting career. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't awesome. know that was fake. Um, really? Yeah. I never we've heard We've said that it so much. And, and it, it really, it, you know what, it really hurts me too, like when it does come up, because it comes up a lot. And I guess I don't say it enough that it was fake because it, it really mm. is, it really is more, um, it doesn't shine a good light on Terrence's character. Mm. And Terrence is not that guy. Mm. Yeah. Terrence is a stand up dude. He's never treated me with no disrespect. And yeah, we've clowned and we've joked and we've said things as we all do once you get into a comfortable state, you know. Uh, where we we were like brother and sister for so long. Yeah. So when the people do ask me that question, I'm so quick to say, guys, it was fake because Terrence would never, ever, ever disrespect me and let alone maliciously try to hurt my feelings. You know, that doesn't come from the 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 breed that me yeah. and him are, you know, and, yeah. or the relationship that he and I have because at the end of the day, and I always tell TJ this, is that at, nobody went through what we went through. We were two kids off the street that just got thrown into major television on a major show and we had to fight for what we had and nobody went through what we went through. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you either going to be at my funeral or I'm going to be at your funeral and one of us got to say something nice about each other. Dang. So mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. we going to be in each other's lives forever. Yeah. And it's because of that show. But yeah, it, it was fake. Where would y'all go on vacation? Fake. I was I hope it was nice. Where was to go through where all did that. we go? I don't even remember. But the fact that y'all had to do that to get a vacation. It was just to get yeah. and we got ratings. Yeah. Yeah. We rate, we were rating hungry. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Every day you check what was the rating yesterday day before. Every single day. It's like waking yeah. up on the scale and seeing if you gain weight overnight. Like that's <laughs> literally what it was. Like we yeah. was addicted to ratings. So it was ratings. That was it. You but, know, on the uh, Rap City docuseries, they said it was a beef between Rap City and 106 and Park. I would, it was, I don't remember if Rap City was kind of still around when I was on 106, to be honest, because it was like th- that transition. Because oh, yeah, Tigger was, that was that already was, hosting yeah, that, Not for y'all, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I wouldn't yeah, yeah. know about yeah. that. Um, I want to know about that. It just came out the other day that, that they were talking about AJ's dreads fake, and it was like they had to sew in or something like that. I seen that too. The other I did day. hear that, did yeah. that, but I don't know if that's true mm-hmm. either. So I wasn't around for for AJ's days either. They always looked real to me. Yeah, yeah. Although, and his head was big, so it was like you know they they went with his head. They, <laughs> yeah, 
I don't look. <laughs> I stay away. <laughs> I stay away. Pick a real, they My hair was sewn me. in. I'm dealing with the stress <laughs> alopecia spots from 106 Apart right now. We want to talk about really? that. <laughs> what? Your uh-huh. hair goes through it. Girls' hairs go through it. That's seven and a half years every day. Oh, yeah. With the flat irons and every mm. different products. And, and wigs wasn't things. in back then. No, no? That was sew-ins. Mm. Yes. Oh, all that tension. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, yes. But you always look good. Thank you, baby. Mm-hmm. Remember your worst it. guest, the, the person that you hated interviewing or was difficult, I should say? Hate is a strong word. Right, so hate is a strong word. I don't use <laughs> yeah. that in my that vocabulary. She no. not, she not I in don't, Dutch right now. Yeah, she ain't I don't use that one on my vocabulary, but... I wouldn't say difficult, it's just like you got those awkward ones. Like on that show in particular, uh, it was Marshmallow. I'm like, why is he here? The DJ? Yeah, because he doesn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no was representative there <laughs> to like, I'm like, what, 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 what do we do? He's just standing here. There's no yeah. gesture or anything. Like it was like weird. It was great to have him there, but still, it was just like, why? Um, yeah. <laughs> Roxy, go interview him. What, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Does it, his light, his marshmallow should have changed colors for mm-hmm. his like emotions or something like that back in the day or something like that to give us a hint. But mm-hmm. no, that was like probably the weirdest and most y'all know me i'm too politically correct Mm -hmm. to 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 mess up a potential future interview yeah what is the key been to just you your longevity because i mean you got brand partnerships with you got uh, tequila and i'm doing a really really dope uh a really really dope show for billboard actually billboard yeah it's Mm -hmm. for billboard billboard has partnered with tres generaciones tequila and we're going to six different cities across the country and we're looking for the anthem of that city, but also the new anthem. So the new talent that's coming out, that's mm-hmm. like creating whatever the vibe is for that city. So of course, if we go to Atlanta, you know, welcome to Atlanta is the staple, but what is that new Atlanta mm-hmm. anthem now? Mm-hmm. You know, Same with Cali, who is that person gonna be in LA? Who is that person gonna be in Houston? You know, Who's that person gonna be in New York? So this whole year, Billboard and Tres Generaciones is going to go across the country. I'm hosting the show and, you know, music is what I love. And so we're going to go find those those anthems. And it's not just hip hop. It's everything. So it's like nice. it might be Miami might be, you don't know, it might be Pitbull with something crazy uh, mm-hmm. or a flow rider. You just we don't know. So. Uh, so, yeah, that's what we're doing now, too. So, what do you yeah. love better, hosting or acting? Hosting. Still hosting? Okay. I still love being. I still love being on your side of the and being able to tell our stories mm-hmm. and giving a giving us a shot to tell our stories to have honest open and safe conversations mm-hmm. is always been is always been my goal i like what sherry represents i like what ellen Absolutely. degeneres represents i like what you know sunny hostin represents for us i mean i like honesty and safe spaces yeah because when you want that person's bad side <laughs> and they want to be mean mm-hmm. it's not fun and I've never been that person I'm so. not mean you are oh you I are was. I remember when you used to say TJ was gay remember and that now he gay I remember and that now <laughs> <you're> <laughs> gay. <laughs> now I'm gay and now you gay no, for real <laughs> for real now Karma. I'm gay no you're right you're right I remember <laughs> Terrence I remember when I, I came to 106 and Park with Wendy one time and I don't even know, remember what I said I just remember Terrence came in there and Terrence was like yo man um, he, he said, "Yo, he said, yo, if you if you say something about my co-host again, you know I'm gonna punch you in the face." What? <laughs> you know what? I was like, "What?" That's what I said because I couldn't believe he came up to me and said that. I said, "Man, I'll fuck you up in this dressing room." <laughs> and then the security and everybody came, and me and Terrence had to go in the bathroom and talk. You never told you that story. No, he oh, came to me bathroom. because of you. But you never talked about me. That's you what always I, talked that's about what I him. I was like, I'm not funny by no Roxy. Let me tell you when I when one moment that always stood out to me that made me realize that you never know who you're going to be working with for or doing project with in the future. Because I remember you and TJ really never used to get along way back. Mm-hmm. And not to drudge that up. And I say it to say because I remember he was executive producing a show that was supposed to be on BET. With and it was me. the TMZ style yep. of, Duval. of all of that. And, and, and he wanted and, and then y'all, he wanted you. Yep. And I was like, look at these two mm. now working with each right. other. And yeah. before they was, they, <laughs> they was, was ready to, I guess in <laughs> the, yeah, they, they was in the bathroom, bathroom ready to throw it. So cute. Yeah. But I was an asshole though. I remember seeing Terrence at 106 in Park. At y- y'all was, was in Harlem. It was. I, it was. 
It, he was, he was, it was Mission Impossible or something. Mm -hmm. It was something y'all was doing in Harlem. And I went up to Terrence, I said, I'm gonna take your fucking job. Like, why would I say that? Because you didn't it get was it. at the time. Jealousy. Yeah. You didn't, get, you didn't get a Mission Impossible. That's what you, that, what you mean you gonna take his job? What was he doing? Oh, no, I was, we were, I was we Wendy's were, co-host. We were broadcasting, he was 106 and Park. yeah, we were yeah. broadcasting mm -hmm. from Harlem. And I think it was the Indiana Jones. You an uh, asshole, bro. Yeah. I didn't even mm -hmm. want the job. No, it was Mission Impossible. Cause I remember Tom Cruise doing the oh, young that jock wasn't dance. Us, then. We wasn't, mm. That was Tom. Oh no, just, it wasn't. It was y'all. Right. No, I promise. No, it wasn't us. Terrence was there. Y'all was hosting one of the park. He was no. That was Julissa and AJ. I mean, Julissa and Tigger no. when Tom Cruise jumped on the couch. Yes. Terrence was because I went up to him and said, "I'm gonna take your fucking job." <laughs> I hate arguing with men. <laughs> I really do. You just well, maybe it wasn't Mission Impossible. It was something in Harlem y'all was I doing. I just was told you what it was. You right. don't want to listen to me. You're right. You did. You just clear up one other thing. Charlamagne tells the story about him. We all lived in, well, y'all all lived in the same building. And yeah. I used to go visit my friend Sean. And Charlamagne always tells we, us, we said this story the last I time I was here. Time, I don't Jess know why you're clearing it up. Right. I'm not clearing it up no I more. I never heard it. What right. Well, what happened, Jess, oh, when right. I first moved into the building, mm -hmm. the woman at the front desk told me I need to watch out for Envy. Because. Envy, there's a guy that lives in this building who is about your height, both bald headed, same complexion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was basically saying Envy got a type. And she was like, Envy being there, and I be hearing weird noises come from the uh -huh. room. She was like, I hear sex sounds coming from it. And that's what she I don't said. Know she said that part. I promise you, you know, that's you what she told me. Lying. Yes. I promise they you. They always say me. this story. That's not true. And I don't even, I never even seen the person that he's talking, that you're Sean. talking about that. Oh, all is, right, good. See? See? Thank you. All right. It's messy. Well, Roxy, we appreciate you for joining us. <laughs> Thank Dutch you for the time, tune, guys. Angels Revenge BET Plus. Appreciate you, Roxy. And watch Roxy on Good Morning America, right? Yep. GMA, GMA3, and yeah. That's yeah. right. All right. Yeah. Breakfast Club, good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.